Alone by Megan E. Freeman, a First Chapter Friday read-aloud video with The Word Nerd. Just a quick reminder before we dive in that I have many more novels and verse available for you on my channel. Today as you listen, watch for the story quote that will appear on screen. Write it down word by word and then follow the instructions given to you by your teacher. Hey everybody, I'm Amanda Zeba. Welcome to my channel, Learning with the Word Nerd, another First Chapter Friday video. It's April, so I'm reading novels in verse this month, and today I'm going to talk to you about Alone by Megan E. Freeman. But before I do that, I have a little confession. Uh, I normally record these videos on Tuesday or Wednesday, giving me plenty of time to edit and post it before Friday, but uh, this week, uh, it's Thursday. I'm recording this the day before, and here's why. This past weekend, I started reading one of the novels in verse. I'd gone to Barnes and Noble and I'd gone to Amazon and I have this huge stack of ones to share with you. And the one that I was reading, I figured out that it was a sequel or a companion novel and it wouldn't be as great to share with you as the original, which I didn't have in my stack. So I set it aside, determined to pick another one. I got a few pages into that one and I just, it was good, but I didn't love it. I didn't think that you would love it. And I promise to share only the best books with you here. So last night at about eight o'clock, once my kids had gone to bed, I pulled out this one and you guys, it was worth the wait. I was sucked in. I stayed up late reading last night. I just finished before recording this video and it is a fantastic book. It's like the modern day version of Hatchet or Island of the Blue Dolphins. And it's all about this girl and how she has to survive when her town is evacuated and she gets left behind. It kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time. The suspense is crazy and I know you're going to love it. Here's what the inside uh, blurb says. A harmless scheme to host a secret sleepover turns into a nightmarish adventure when 12-year-old Maddie awakes to discover she's completely alone. Left behind in a town that has been mysteriously evacuated and abandoned, with only a Rottweiler named George for companionship, all the books she can read, and whatever food and resources she can forage, she must figure out how to navigate this new reality. Months pass, and she grapples with adolescence and escapes natural disasters, looters, and wild animals. But as Maddie wrestles with loneliness and the meaning of life in the face of endless solitude, her will to survive surpasses even the most frightening experiences. And ultimately, she determines that the thesis from her stepbrother's left-behind book report is correct. Being alone is the greatest challenge of all. Written in sparse verse that reflects the character's isolation and loneliness, this is a powerful novel of strength and perseverance that will keep readers thinking long after the last page has been turned. And again, I devoured this book in two settings uh, and absolutely loved it. Let's dive in to Alone by Megan E. Freeman. This is not an adolescent hyperbole. This is my reality. Alone in this place where I've been surviving on my own for over three years with no one but a big smelly Rottweiler who farts and hogs the covers. You might think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. I'm not just being dramatic, like my grandma might say. I figured by the time I was a teenager, I'd be thinking about getting my driver's permit and going to dances, playing varsity soccer and kissing, but instead, I'm thinking about where to find food and fuel and water and whether to use Mountain Dew to force flush the toilet or to drink even though it's the color of radioactive urine and it's probably toxic when ingested over long periods of time. Better to be radioactive or dehydrated? These are the questions that plague my daily existence. At least for now. At least until my parents come back. Back when my life was heaven, I had no idea. Shoes off before you come in, Mom hollers as I open the kitchen door. I mop today. She wipes orange slop off the baby's face. Honey, I know you have different rules at your dad's, but could you try a little harder to make an effort when you're at our house? Sometimes the way my mom talks to me feels like a scratchy shirt tag on the back of my neck. I kick off my tattered and converse and calculate how much more I need to save before I can special order a custom pair for my 13th birthday. Mom hugs me. Sorry, sweetie, I'm just rushing to get ready to go. So glad you're home. Hands me a mug filled with chopped carrots and celery. I bet you're starving. I squeeze an empty Twinkie wrapper in my pocket. I'll have to remember to throw it away later. Before middle school, I was never even tempted to lie. Lately, though, 
It just, it just seems to make things so much simpler. Mom, are you going out like that? I make my horror obvious. Mom has on the paisley embarrassments she calls her meditation pants. She always wears something mortifying to the Tuesday night Dharma talks. They all just sit still and learn to breathe, like breathing is something you have to learn. Mom does that thing where she pulls my hair to get me to smile. Oh, come on, honey. It's called a sitting meditation. If I wore jeans like yours, I'd lose circulation in my legs. Come to think of it, did your dad see you wearing those when you left this morning? Seriously, my jeans are not even tight. So what if the shape of my cell phone is permanently embossed on one pocket? Sometimes just being in the same room with my mom, even the sound of her voice, makes it hard to be a person. Paul's car pulls up. Mom grabs her wallet out of the diaper bag. Thanks for babysitting, sweetie. We should be back early unless they're stopping people at the checkpoints. We'll definitely be home before curfew. She kisses Trevor, calls to the twins. Hey guys, bedtime at the usual time tonight. No messing around. She signs, I love you, toward the dining room, blows me a kiss, and is gone. Those first, there's first few little hints letting us know that something is not quite what we would consider normal when she says, unless they're stopping people at checkpoints, we'll definitely be home before curfew. These are the things that regular adults in regular society have to worry about. Brothers. Trevor smiles from the high chair, reaches for me. I lean in, pretend to steal his nose. He erupts and belly laughs, smears pureed carrots in my long hair. I pull it into a ponytail with a twist tie. Sigh. I adore my baby brother, but I want to get upstairs. Check on the weekend plan. You couldn't pay me enough to eat that. Elliot surprises me, unnaturally quiet. Never hear him coming. I try to bribe him to feed Trevor. I have another Twinkie in my backpack. In the gluten-free economy of my bizarre family, Twinkies are worth a lot on the stepbrother black market. But he's helping James. Science project. Can't be bought. They have one of those freaky twin connections. Can read each other's mind. Plus the fact that James is deaf makes me feel awkward. Even after all this time, I know it's not cool to say that, but there it is. I said it anyway. Doesn't help I live half time with Dad and Jennifer. I used to love the regular breaks from the gluten-phobic diets and the silent dinner conversations. Until Mom and Paul had Trevor. Now, it feels like I'm missing out. I want my own freaky, freaky connection with someone who can read my mind. My pocket vibrates. Click on Ashanti's name. 6 to 55 p.m. Weekend mission is a go. Our weekend plan, or how I got myself into this mess. We are going to lie to our parents and have a secret sleepover. Emma and Ashanti will say they're spending the night at each other's house, and I will tell mom I am with dad and tell dad I'm with mom, but we will really sleep over at my grandparents' empty summer apartment. We will make popcorn, stay up late, watch glamorous old Katherine Hepburn movies, lounge on the king-size bed, and sleep as long as we like. No one nagging us to get up, do the laundry, clean your room, change stinky girls' diapers. We are geniuses. Thesis. After dinner, Elliot sneaks up on me again. Can you please help me with my book report? I'm having trouble with my thesis. Thesis? He's in fourth grade. What does he know about drafting a thesis? I'm inaccelerated. My family is a freak show. He takes a deep breath and launches into an explanation. It's called Island of the Blue Dolphins, and it's about a girl who lives alone on an island for 18 years. She jumps off a boat and stays behind to save her brother, but then he dies, and she tames a dog, and later she makes a friend, but really she's pretty much on her own until she's totally grown up and Elliot, sharper than I attend. His hands flutter. He shifts his weight. I tweak the brim of his hat. He relaxes. I have to prove whether her biggest challenge is to A, defend herself against the wild dogs, B, provide food and shelter for herself, or C, learn to trust a friend. Plot, deals, plot details are sketchy in my memory, so I ask him what he thinks. Her brother dies and she's left alone. Elliot's eyes fill with tears. The wild dogs get him. He glances toward the dining room where we hear James working. Jeez, why do they let little kids read this stuff, even if they aren't accelerated? Listen, Elle, I say, wild dogs can be scary for sure, and it sucks what happened to her brother, but if she doesn't have a place to live and food to eat, she can't exactly survive, can she? I think her biggest challenge is B. Definitely. Elliot exhales. 
Really? I kind of thought so too, but I wasn't positive. Thanks, Maddie. I smile and think of the upcoming weekend, our very own island of the no brothers or parents, all alone with unlimited fun and freedom. Cannot wait. Except it doesn't really turn out like that. If you want to read how Maddie's plan goes wrong and how she ends up all alone and then what happens, you're totally going to want to pick up a copy of this book from your school library, local indie bookstore, or via the link in the description box. I hope you'll come back again for more novels and verse all this month and more First Chapter Friday videos. See you again next time. To continue reading Alone by Megan E. Freeman, pick up a copy from your school library, purchase one from your favorite local indie bookstore, or grab it via the link in the description box. Then check out the rest of the novels and verse available on my playlist. And finally, look at all of the other great selections on my full First Chapter Friday playlist. Today's mystery quote says, I'm going to make sure my one wild and precious life is spent living as fully and completely as I can. Please like this video and subscribe so you can stay connected for more great First Chapter Friday videos and other videos you can use in your classroom. Happy reading!